Hey, church family, welcome to Saturated Saturday. We just concluded an incredible worship night at our San Pablo campus, our Mandarin campus, and way up in Jessup, Georgia. They even had a worship night there, too. They're worshiping. They're probably still going, honestly. <laughs> Rock and roll. Um, you know, the only upsetting thing, we have the Adamax here with us. That's not upsetting. That's not the upsetting part. Jeez. The upsetting part is that you guys, you two clearly didn't get the blazer Sorry. memo that Lindsay and I coordinated on. Maybe next year we can coordinate. I follow his Christmas and Easter programming of the, the coat, you know, the blazer. <laughs> yeah, you, you girls look lovely in your pantsuits. We're doing business with the Lord. We're doing business, yeah. That's it. All right, so we just concluded an incredible worship night. Why is it so important to gather together, to worship? I mean, we talk about it all the time, but why are nights like this so special, so marking? You want me to talk about this in like two minutes? <laughs> yes. So it's like the point of our existence, okay? Worship is war. Lucifer is in heaven. If you read the description, y'all know this, in, in Ezekiel, it's hard to determine like what he's made of. Is he, is he wearing diamonds and, and topaz and those things? Or is he made of those things? And God is the light that was refracting through Lucifer and he was like the, the lead choir director. And I think he gets tired of people looking or angels looking through him and he wants them to look to him so he gets cast out. So every single time we gather together, especially congregationally, and we make much of Jesus, we are declaring you are, you are still cast out. You have still been defeated. That is what worship is. It just breaks stuff loose in our own persons. It breaks stuff loose in our city. It breaks stuff loose in the heavenlies. I don't know how to fully describe it. I just know that it's supernatural. What about for y'all? What does it mean when people come together? Because, you know, we had a conversation recently, and you guys talked about how you used to lead, like, in random fields in Yuli oh, with yeah. not very many people, Catholic churches where they wouldn't even let you on the stage. You were just wa craving just let's lead worship in the presence of God. So what does it mean for you, nights like this, nights of worship? It's so powerful to come together, period, when it's just, if it was the four of us. You know, I think that's, that's what hit me so hard about uh, us in this building today, and thousands of people coming together. I think about, we are, we had the opportunity to go to Israel in February and see this old temple that people go up to and all these uh, Jewish people go up and put prayers in the wall and they can't go on top of that mount because they can't realize what Peter talks about, that we are the living stones now. And when we come together, we gather, gather together, it's the manifest presence of God that happens when we gather and we see healings, we see miracles take place, we see forgiveness happen and it never gets old. I mean, the camps that we've done over the years and crazy mishaps and you know, blown trailer tires and all the other There's stuff. There's still something different about tonight, man, because even, even when we do like worship events, you know, concert things, it's still different. This is our church, you know? Our, just our church is all, get, and we do have people from all over the place. I haven't found out this week that people vacation for saturated now. But yeah. even those folks are, they're, at least online, they're like plugged into what's happening right. here. But man, this is, this is one local expression of the bride of Christ all getting yes. together. And we're all singing the same songs. We're all, crazy. you know, got our eyes focused on the same thing. So it matters a bunch, it's really so special. Good. So we've been singing this song in the presence of the king all week. It's kind of been the saturated theme song, if you will. And you two wrote it. Where did that song come from? And what did you hope, you know, how did you hope it would live in the lives of the people of our church? You know, actually, it was like a big crew of our worship team that wrote this together. Um, we have these things called creative offsites. It's my favorite thing we do. Um, and Pastor Joby was given vision about Saturated this year in Acts 2. And so when I walked into our writing retreat, we kind of created a writing retreat after our creative offsite, lots of things that are fun and creative. Um, but I was just praying through Acts 2, and the, the verses are just a prayerful, an expectation um, for God to do what he did in Acts 2 in this house on this soil again. So the verses are just, Lord, we want you to do it again. Like, do it here, do it in a unique way. We're surrendered to how you want to. And then the, uh, the bridge is just 2 Corinthians 3.17. Um, so, yeah, we kind of, you know, we had some fun with some poetry. Uh, Pastor Olson, he always brings the poetry, so it was awesome. <laughs> Anything you done? Yeah, I mean, really, you and Olson wrote the entire song, and it was just the bridge that was hanging out there. And we all knew, I was talking with Michael, we were like, 
It's gotta be something really easy to sing, a statement of faith of who we are, the freedom that we have. And I was, we have a break out here and a surf break up here at the poles and I was out there one afternoon and I was just out there and thinking about the power of God, the raw power of God in the ocean. And the entire bridge came to me in that moment. I told Lance, I said, this has to be it. And it was like, but it's just out there thinking of him and resting in him. It was his so. excuse to let me, let me make him surf more. You see where I'm going, you see where I'm going like with my this? My best ideas come when I'm surfing yeah. alone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So creating original music, we've been writing more songs as a team. And Pastor Joby, I'd love to hear from you. What is the power of writing songs from a place that is for our church, our people writing songs for our church. Why is there power in that? Well, <clears throat> there, the Adamants are talking about creative offside and all that because because we are under the authority of the Word of God. So we're not just trying to write songs to have a, a hit song. It's just in line with what we're teaching our church in that moment. And so I think um, the best things come from asking the question, what is my part in, in the Great Commission? And a part of your part of the Great Commission is helping make disciples with music. And so that is the drive. That's very different than just trying to produce records or to just get people to listen to your stuff. That's not really what we are trying to do whatsoever. Um, we're just trying to make disciples of the people at 1122. And then if God ever wants to do any more with that, which he has a lot, that, that's his, that's, that's just up to him. So that, that's, and yeah. honestly, that's all I've been ever, that's what I've been doing my whole life, is just try to make disciples in front of the people right in front of me, and then if God has more or wants to do more with that, then, you know, let it be so. If not, no problem. Let it be so. Another song hey. we wrote. I see what you did there. I see what I did there. That's one of my uh, favorites. <laughs> that is a good one. Okay, so a part of our worship night at all of our campuses were live testimonies. Oh, my God. And, you know, we don't just program things to program things like you're talking about. Why is it important to include the live testimonies, which, I mean, I was weeping through every one, but why is it so, why is that such an important part of worship night? So next year, the first full series, here's a little preview for Creative All Sight, yeah. is uh, testimony, and, and we're getting, it's rooted in, in Revelation 12, and Jesus is talking to the church and those that have even been martyred, and said, and they will overcome by the, by, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Then he goes on to say, and they did not even consider their, their lives something to be protected. And so the word of the testimony, like, I mean, Romans 10, if we don't preach, how will people hear? And so God, as image bearers of God, he speaks us into existence. And when people give up and give testimony to the blood of Jesus Christ, yes. you speak life into existence that did not exist before you spoke those words. And listen, as the, the, the primary preacher and teacher here, the, the power of testimony around here is so, so, so important. I can't tell you the number of times that, that people came to Christ because they heard somebody else's testimony, not, I mean, they hear a lot of my sermons, but I don't have everyone's experience. Mm -hmm. And so praise God for the vulnerability of the folks that got up yes. and just shared, yes. um, that they were praising God no matter the circumstances or situation. Sure. Yeah, Bella's story, you know, there is, there's moments where it's like, I think it's so important to share because when you're vulnerable and you are just praising from the middle of scenarios like infertility that, you know, we've even walked through, I feel like it unlocks vulnerability in others to approach the throne with a new level of confidence than they ever had before, to not believe that they have to have a period at the end of every story, but that they could worship God from the middle because he's worthy of it and because his nearness is like the greatest gift of all. I know she said in rehearsal, she's like, I've never heard his voice so clear. And that was so true for me too. So there's a gift to always take away from being vulnerable with your story. And God is so good to not let us miss out on one part of his nature. Okay, so speaking of confidence, the three of you, we see you lead in different capacities from stage, and all three of you lead with such confidence, but I know, and, and you've shared, that sometimes it's not always in full confidence. Sometimes you hear some whispers before you get up here and do the thing that God has called you to do. So what are some of those whispers that you get maybe before you approach leading, and how do you combat against that? I mean, I have, I have a ton of confidence in the Lord. I have confidence in the gospel. I have no confidence in me. 
I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm being serious, man. I am overwhelmed by this whole thing. I mean, look at sure. this thing. This is crazy. Um, they, the whispers I get all the time is, who do you think you are? If they knew you, if they knew your struggles, if they knew the way you talk to your wife and children this week, like how, we got a family series coming up next. <laughs> but if you have to be a black belt in order to teach everything, who could ever teach? Sure. Yeah. And so I think the only thing that makes me not a hypocrite is that I profess my hypocrisy. So I think the moment you profess it, you yeah. cease to be one. But look, man, I'm still struggling like crazy trying to figure this thing out. Now, I've got a few years under me following after Jesus, and I'm just telling you, man, he's faithful. He's faithful. Amen. I, I think for me, that scripture, that his power is made perfect in weakness, and it just, I'm only adding on to what Pastor Joby said, is like, when I come out on this stage, knowing how the enemy wants, wants to work, how he only wants to steal, kill, and destroy, he, he wants to take the mouthpiece that God has given me, the calling that's on my life. We all have assignments that the Lord has given us, um, but for me, it is to, to sing the high praises of God in the house of God with the people of God. And the enemy wants to shut that up and does not want me to lift my hands. I feel weighted down sometimes. That's where I feel, I feel like, I've told Lindsay even recently, even before this conference, like my heels feel like they're driving in the ground sometimes, it's heaviness. And as soon as we get into the song, it's like it, as soon as I just lift my hands, I forcefully do it. It's not out of, I don't wanna be led by emotion. I wanna be led by what the word of God says and lifting holy hands, and when I start to do that, it's like the enemy just gives up. Mm, that's good. So Pastor Joby, you just said right at the close of the worship night, but not everyone, not every campus got to hear it. You made a connection between what we've been doing all week and then what we're doing tomorrow to close out Saturated. So to close out this deep end, can you make that connection again for us and why people need to come tomorrow, no matter what, they're coming. So I'm sitting over there. I didn't know what I was supposed to do tonight, like what my part of the deal was. Um, Saturated is actually easier for me than y'all, because y'all, I mean, I, I, my friends are preaching. I'm just showing up, like, what do I do? Oh, I'm introducing, okay, cool. So anyway, so Boo hands me my little card with the things to do the benediction. It had all this stuff. I was like, I'm not saying any of that, it's dumb. It was all like how many people came and all that. I don't care. So. So I just started thinking, because this whole, this whole follow the journey of Acts 2, that was not my idea either. That was y'all's idea. That was the uh, worship team in regards to the music and kind of the theme of every night. That was where we were going to trace it, right? And obviously you talked to me. I was like, yeah, that's cool. That sounds, that sounds great. And I didn't tell any preachers what to preach about, um, except JD. I told him we're going to do baptism, so how about tee that up for us? And so <laughs> then I'm just on the front row over there thinking, wait a minute. When Acts 2 is over, which tonight would be like the culm our, our version of the culmination of Acts 2, right? And then you flip the page. The, the next thing is the crippled man gets healed. And I thought, man, tomorrow morning at 9 and 11, 22, we're going to pray for healing. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray for miracles. We're going to pray that people are going to be released. We're going to pray that the Spirit of God would continue to move just like he moved 2,000 years ago on those temple steps. And that lame beggar said, hey, y'all got some money? And Peter's like, I'm in ministry. I ain't got no money. But what I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. I believe there are going to be some people that are get up and walk tomorrow. Yeah. And so that's where we're going tomorrow. We're doing it. And I'm very unprepared. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that will be amazing then. Um, well, we can't thank you enough. We're so excited for tomorrow. Animax, thank you so much for all you've done and serving this body and Good your luck. creativity. It's, it's so fun to be led in worship by you. Church family, thanks for being a part of Saturated this whole week, and we are not done yet, as Pastor Joby said, so make sure you're here tomorrow. Come ready, come expectant. Invite your one more. Invite that person that you know is just in the middle of something that they need prayer and healing for because we're gonna be doing it tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow morning, church.